guess who has a cold? Today we're going to be taking a look at blend submesh positions. What does that mean? If you have a duplicator with a bunch of objects, you can set different submesh positions and then move the objects around seamlessly between those positions. So you can see here, we have all of our squares on a line and then they move over to the circle and then they move into the square and then repeat. It's actually pretty easy to set up, so let's get into it. Here's our base scene with a couple of things already set up. All it is is a shape and some of the background elements to show us where we want things to land. So the first thing that we wanna do is select our ellipse shape and put it into a duplicator. The first duplicator that we're going to use is going to be linear distribution mode. We will set the count to nine and we will set the size to about 1600. And I've already got my shape set up with the color array and things like that. Um, if you wanna learn more about that, check out my last video on duplicator sequences. Let's rename this to linear. And this is our first sub mesh position. So for now, we can turn that off and let's make the circle distribution. So select our lip shape again, alt click, duplicator, and we'll set this one to circle. Now for blend sub mesh positions to work, you have to have the same number of objects on each sub mesh. So here we're gonna set our count to nine and we're going to increase the radius until it hits this guide circle that we have. Let's rename this to circle and I'm just gonna put it on top. And that's our second sub mesh position. So for the last one, let's go ahead and select our lip shape again. I'll click, put it into a duplicator and this duplicator is gonna be the grid and it's gonna be a three by three, which is nine. And we're gonna boost the size up until it hits our guide. Okay, let's name this. And I'm just gonna put this on the top of the stack. And just to keep things clean, I'm actually gonna move these outside of this main folder here collapse that because we don't really need to look at that anymore. So we're going to start with this circle duplicator. Make sure that that's the one that's in the attribute editor. We're going to go to deformers and we're going to do blend sub mesh positions. So now here, what we want to do is we want to take the linear duplicator and drag it into here. Now you can see as we move this slider, it will blend between the linear duplicator and the circle duplicator. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put this into the control center so we can use it easier later. This is a pro feature, so if you don't have it, um, you'll just have to come back into this attribute to animate it later. So now we have things blending from the linear duplicator to the circle duplicator, and now we need to do the same thing with the square duplicator. Go to deformers and add blend sub mesh positions. And here, what we wanna do is we want to use the circle duplicator. So we turn off the circle, duplicator and we turn on the square duplicator and the square duplicator is the only one that we actually need to see these other ones need to exist but we don't ever have to look at them so now you can see that we're blending between the grid duplication and the circle duplication and I'm going to also put this one into the control center to make things easier I'm also going to rename these so this one will be circle and this one will be square and so now we see in the control center we have the circle blend and the square blend. And so with the square blend, you can go from square to circle. And when it's on the circle distribution, you can now change the circle from circle to linear. And you'll see that if I move to here, it's now moving from square to linear because the square blend at 100% is looking at whatever the circle duplicators distribution is. And when the circle distribution is at 100%, it is linear. And when it's at zero, it is at circle. And so that's how those things kind of work. So let's add some quick animation. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with both the circle and the square at 100%, add some keyframes there. Let's go to 24 frames. And here we want to change the circle blend from 100% to zero, which puts it now into the circle distribution. And let's add a blank keyframe on the square blend as well. Move to our next spot. Now this animation doesn't look very great, so let's add some easing. If you select your keyframes here, go to graph editor, and then this button right here adds Bezier handles to everything. And I like to really just kind of crank it out like this. So now you can see everything is moving nice and smoothly. It has a nice ease on there. 
But this also can be a little bit boring because it's so precise and exact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a noise node. We're going to set the minimum to minus 300, the maximum to 300. And then let's open up all of our duplicators. We're going to put the noise into the shape position. And at first that makes everything crazy. They're all moving around. They're not hitting their marks like they're supposed to. So then what we need to do is inside of the noise node, we're going to add a fall off. This fall off, I'm going to make it rectangle. And then I'm going to just make it the exact size of our composition, which in this case is 1080 by 1920. And now what we can do is we can animate the strength. So we see that if the strength is at zero, the animation plays exactly how it, it used to. So what we can do is we can animate this keyframe. So we'll start at zero and then as they are moving about the middle of the movement, we can bring this up to like 60 and you'll see that now they're jumbled just a little bit. And then here, when they're supposed to hit their mark, we can come back down to zero. And so now as they're going, they're going to be a little offset and we can also change this up a little bit, right? So they don't really perfectly hit their marks. They're kind of moving around and they're just kind of scattering in the in-between animations. So like and so now, as we look at this, we see that they move around a little bit more. The animation's still not perfect, but there's a couple other things we can do to help out with that. Number one, we select our fall off keyframes, and instead of being linear, we add those handles and crank them out like this. So it's still acting a little bit funny. This part takes a lot of massaging. Another thing that we can do to make the animation more interesting is to offset the timing. So for now, I'm going to turn off the noise node so that we can just kind of see the base animation. So let's open up our circle blend some mesh positions node. And then here in the time offset, we can right click, add behavior, add a stagger. Set that to negative 12 and the maximum to zero. And then we're also going to plug this into the squares blend time offset. So now you can see they don't all move at the exact same time. They go one after the other, and then they're kind of going in between here. And you can see that it also takes more time than we had given it to get to that final position. So let's move our marker here, hit N. And so now that includes the whole animation. And so that's the foundation. So now you can go in and you can tweak the animation, make it a little bit smoother, add different things. In mine, my shapes also turn into circles when they go to the circle distribution, I added the trails, a little bit of texture. But now you know the basics of how blend submesh positions work. Can't wait to see what you make.